This one you definitely can start on earlier than six months, um, but if you don't, then I recommend just doing it at six months out. Don't wait any later than that. <laughs> blushing brides welcome back to my channel today we are going to cover everything that you need to be doing in the five to six months before your wedding day so if you are a bit further out than this be sure that you watch my other timeline videos I have one for 10 to 12 months out seven to nine months out um, and then five to six months out and I will be posting one um, on the last couple months leading up to your wedding very soon as well um, so be sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss when I post that or any of my other amazing, awesome wedding planning videos that I post every single Wednesday. And these videos are like a couple months grouped together and they're a little bit more high level. Um, if you want more in-depth checklists that are broken down month by month, I do have those in the Unveiled Ultimate Planner, which I will link for you below. Um, so if you haven't already, be sure that you go and grab that. It's very helpful. Um, I have each of the monthly checklists in there as well as a monthly calendar so that you can break the checklist down um, into the calendars to make sure that you get it all done on time. Also the 10 to 12 months out and the 7 to 9 months out timeline videos, those checklists can actually be done a little bit earlier than that. Um, so if you are like 18 months out, some of you are even starting earlier than that. I know there's some of you who are doing 24 months out. Um, and those checklists can definitely be done that far out. However, these last couple checklists, there are a few things you could probably do early, but these last ones, the five to six months out and the last couple months leading up to your wedding, a lot of this stuff does need to be done in the corresponding time. Awesome, so let's dive into the checklist for five to six months out. The first thing that we are going to accomplish in this time period is buying your bridesmaids dresses. This one you definitely can start on earlier than six months, um, but if you don't, then I recommend just doing it at six months out. Don't wait any later than that. Um, because especially if you're letting your girls pick their own dresses, this can end up taking a little bit longer than you would expect. Um, I do have a video with Birdie Gray where I did a Birdie Gray bridesmaid dress try-on. I will link that below. Um, but I love their dresses and I highly recommend them. You get them within seven days and they're just beautiful dresses, high quality for under $100. And yeah, they're just an awesome company, female owned, female run. Highly recommend. Um, I will link that video below as well as their website. The next thing we are going to do is book our invitation calligrapher or start addressing those invitations ourselves. Um, it's kind of old school nowadays to book a calligrapher. I think if you really want one, you could find somebody locally, or I'm sure that there are a ton of people to choose from on Etsy that will do this for you. If you are on a tighter budget, this is something that you will want to do yourself. Um, I kind of like the handwritten look too. I think it feels just more personal, um, especially when it's like your own handwriting. Even if you have kind of bad handwriting, that is totally fine. I think that it feels a little bit more personal and it's kind of cool to handwrite your invitations out. Um, if you have tons and tons of invitations that you need to send out, you might want to have a little girls night with maybe like your mom and your maid of honor um, and anybody super close to you, they can help you kind of stuff those envelopes and help you address those invitations. Um, so yeah, that's a fun little wine and invite party that you might want to have, a fun little extra experience to involve your girls and get stuff done. We are not going to send out invitations yet. Um, you can, but I recommend sending them out about eight weeks before your big day. But we want to start having getting them addressed and getting them ready, because um, this can take a little bit longer than you might expect. And you have so much other stuff to be doing on the couple months leading up to your wedding that I'll tell you about in my next video. Um, but you have so much other stuff going on that you don't want to be like rushed to do this. So this is something that can be done early um, and then put them off to the side and then send them out about eight weeks beforehand. The next checklist item for five to six months out is we are going to confirm our floral design with our florist. If you are spending a bit more on flowers and going with the full professional florist, 
um, they may do a mock-up with you so that you can see the centerpieces um, as well as possibly a bridesmaid's bouquet or something um, but that's usually only done if you are going to be spending a bit more on flowers I do have an entire video on whether you should do a pro florist or DIY flowers I will link that below um, but if you are doing your flowers yourself I would recommend doing a mock-up um, as well just so that you can kind of like get comfortable with it and you know that you like the look that you picked so that when all your flowers show up a couple days before you get married you're not like oh I hate this um, and you have to start over <laughs> so if you are doing your flowers yourself I recommend ordering one bouquet maybe like one centerpiece um, and then making sure that you like the look and kind of getting an idea of what's going to be involved in putting your flowers together yourself if that is the route that you're taking the next thing on our list is start a decor list so what tends to happen is you just buy stuff along the way and like pile it all in a closet somewhere or something and then you kind of forget what you have, um, you forget why you bought certain things, <laughs> etc. So basically you want to have a list of all of your decor and where you want it um, and how many of each thing that you have. This is a worksheet that is included in the Unveiled Ultimate Planner as well. Um, but you can totally just do this in a notebook too if that's what you want to do Just be sure that you are tracking all of your decor so that you know what you have and you know what you still need to purchase Leading up to the big day then we also want to select and purchase or rent the groom's attire as well um, You may want to do the groom first and then pick the groomsman after just so that you can make sure everything goes together And you don't really you want to make sure the groom has his pick of what he wants especially if he's purchasing the suit um, that is one little tip that I always suggest if your groom is somebody who does wear a suit often I recommend just purchasing a nice suit for them because it's really nice to have a nice tailored suit um, especially if they will use that in the future um, so yeah so do your groom first and then you can do your groomsman after we'll also purchase all of your accessories for your groom as well the shirt, the tie, the bow tie, the pocket square, etc, etc. During this time period, we are also going to have our groomsmen pick out their attire and submit those orders um, or get those rental orders in as well. I like to get the groomsmen working on this early because sometimes they procrastinate until the last minute. So um, the earlier you can start this with them, the better as well. We'll also select our flower girl and ring bearer attire um, and have their parents purchase that. The next thing on our list, and this is a fun one, is to book our honeymoon. Um, we want to make sure that we have that all booked out and ready to go because you are going to be super busy in the next couple months leading up to the wedding, so you don't want to rush this decision. So you'll want to do your research, find an amazing place. I definitely have some videos in the works on honeymoon ideas and places to go. Um, but yeah, do your research, find an amazing place to go, and book your honeymoon. The next thing we're going to do is go have your cake tasting and finalize your flavors and your design on that if you are doing a traditional wedding cake. Um, even if you're not doing a super traditional wedding cake and maybe you're just going to a bakery to get like cupcakes or cookies or whatever you're doing, I suggest going and having a tasting beforehand just so that you can be sure that that's what you want and that you have like the right flavors and the right look that you're going for. Next, we are going to reserve our hotel blocks. Um, this is usually pretty easy to do. I recommend doing something fairly close to the venue. Um, and you just call them up and request a hotel block. And sometimes they'll have you come visit and they can kind of like show you the rooms and stuff. Um, but basically you just request a block and then they'll tell you their um, policy on it and everything. So figure out how many out of town guests um, are going to be invited so you have a kind of an idea of how many rooms you need. And then you will book your block with them and then um, a couple weeks leading up to the wedding you'll release all the unwanted rooms. Um, so that will be on your next checklist. But you want to go ahead and get this reserved and then shoot this info out on your um, wedding website. Then at the same time that you're booking your hotel block, you'll probably want to book your bridal party suites um, as well as your wedding night suites. I recommend doing this at the same hotel as your out-of-town guests if possible. Um, if you are doing it at a super nice hotel, you might want to do a block of rooms at the really nice hotel and then a block of rooms at a more affordable hotel if you have some guests who may not be able to afford the nicer place um, just so that they have options. But I like to keep everyone together because it's fun to like be able to have breakfast together um, or kind of like run into each other in the hallways and stuff like that. Like 
you just kind of all feel a lot closer together if you're all staying at the same place. Um, and then you'll book a room for the guys and a room for the girls, especially if you don't have a space to get ready at the venue. Some venues have amazing like getting ready areas, um, but some do not and some you might not even be able to get in early enough to start getting ready. So we want to book some nice suites for the guys to hang out and get ready in as well as for the girls to hang out and get ready in. Um, and then you'll also want to book one for the evening of your wedding. And then the last checklist item for you for five to six months out is to book your transportation. So it's important to book your hotel block before you book your transportation because a lot of hotels will provide transportation for your out of town guests um, to the wedding. So you can ask your venue actually if they have any hotels that they work with. There are a lot of hotels that work with wedding venues um, that say if you book your hotel block through them, then they'll provide free transportation for your guests um, to and from the wedding. So book your hotel block and be sure you ask them about that and then figure out what you need to do for transportation for the rest of the people. Um, I also recommend booking a party bus for the bridal party. You can do where you book one bus and then have it take the guys first and then have it take the girls um, and then you can all leave together on that party bus afterwards. Um, and then if you want a getaway car as well, you might want to do that. This, I don't know, I don't think usually people aren't really in a great state to be driving after their wedding. Um, so if you're drinking, then you need to book a getaway car with a driver. But from my experience, the bride and the groom actually prefer to just have a party bus and to leave with all their friends um, and their closest family on the party bus to the after party at the hotel. Um, that's usually what ends up happening. So if, especially if you're planning on drinking, I wouldn't really waste your time or money on a getaway car. So like I said, this stuff is broken down more specifically in month by month in the Ultimate Wedding Planner, so be sure that you go grab your copy of that. And these items are like pretty easy, so it's easy to put them off, um, but you really wanna make sure that you're on track on your timeline starting six months out so that when you start getting closer and closer and those checklists start getting a little bit longer, um, that you have plenty of time to get everything done and you're not super stressed or super rushed. Um, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and send it to your other engaged friends. And we'll see you next time. Happy planning! I watch you as you drive Do you know I'm looking? And I can't help but smile Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on I put my feet up And we just sing along And I can't help